To stay faithful to our series, Portrait of a Working Artist, we met Samuel Walker for our next interview. Samuel graduated from Pratt in 2012 and has had a hard time to find employment and has failed. He has not made any money from his art but instead works as an engineer to make ends meet. Despite of the obstacles that lay on a way for African Americans in the art world, Samuel thinks it is combination of skills, talent and persistence that decide success. We meet Samuel in his East Brooklyn apartment where he lives with his parents. Samuel divides his work time between his art and the job that pays bills. On the walls hang the array of his work which consists of mostly African American women and comic characters. And now we present Samuel Walker. Yeah, so, um, you know, my it all started with my, my grandmother, uh, Nana, as we call her. Uh, she, was, uh, she was always an artist, and then um, at my mother started drawing, um, and then I guess my uncle saw that, and then he started drawing. I guess you are all crazy people. Uh, yeah, more or less. Some of us, um, yeah, least. So you had a starting artist. We know that many of the artists that were while they were working and they did the things and successful posthumously. We also know that for many successful artists from the biographies that um, some of them were born with very wealthy families and they were already very well connected in the art world. So knowing that, um, how does this affect your perspective um, as an artist? Where do you see your place? Um, I think that's that's a great point. Um, I think that uh, obviously uh, lots of people are successful because of who they know, uh, some form of nepotism, and uh, you know I, I definitely see that uh, where I thought that like your skill is supposed to show where you're at. You know, it's like either it's either you're really good at making the art or you have some great idea behind the art and uh, that's why people want it you know that's why you're successful that's why you're in demand and uh, you know it there's more to it than that you know it's more to it than just being good at what you're doing you know at the end of the day because if that was it then you know uh, I think a lot more people would be successful and uh, I think part of it is that uh, you have to sort of fight for your place in the art world if you don't know someone. So how much know? time do you have to create art? Let's say you have a daytime job, or you have your freelance, or you have your gigs, or whatever you do for a living, right? Um, how much time do you have left after that to create art? Something you like, really like to do? How much time do you have? Um, well, you know, a, a friend said to me once something that I think is really important. Um, he said, time is created. You know, I think a lot of people think of time like, oh, I have this day, you know, and I have to uh, cram all of this stuff into a day, you know. But at the end of the day, if if you really want to do something, you can dedicate even 15 minutes to it, you know, even an hour to it. You know, if you drew for an hour a day, you know, you'll make some progress on something. So, you know, you, you can find the time to do art. I mean, I have a sketchbook and... When I take a train ride, I try to always take it with me. Um, so, you also mentioned that when you went to Pratt, when you studied at Pratt, you felt that um, the, the art institutions are more focused on European art. Um, do you think that is because of the established standards uh, in the art market, what is considered high art, or that's because of the lack of opportunity for African American? In the art market. Um, I think it's it's sort of both. I, I think there's sort of an an interesting phenomenon where, like, I had an art teacher once say to me, uh, 
black art is in, you should be happy, right? And I think at the end of the day, you know, uh, black art, specifically in the art market, is always sort of looked at in that way, where, you know, it's it's a fad, it's a, a thing that comes and goes, you know, and, and so at, at the end of the day, there is a, a larger lack of representation, you know, there's always, you know, there's always a niche market for it, you know, I think there's always a niche market, but it's not the whole market, and it's always, you know, regulated to a certain portion, you know, so I think that, um, yeah, it's definitely, I think it's both, you know, I think that there's, there's not enough opportunities, you know, I, I know lots of, lots of artists, and on top of that, it's not enough, um, yeah, just representation, you know, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's, uh, it's really there, you know. <laughs> Your objects are the portraits are mostly African-American people, right? Or that's the only thing that comes to you, that it's, it's black art, so. Mm -hmm. What, what, it, what, it, what black art means to you, exactly, what is that? Um, so yeah, that's interesting, because, uh, like I said, I think, w when I was in school, actually, I remember coming in, uh, to one class, and, or, it was like a critique. So there's like art on the walls, and I remember seeing some art of black people, right, on the wall. And I remember looking around the room to see who, 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 who did it. And uh, I was the only person of color in the room. Uh, so then I start listening to actual critique, and what I hear them saying, and it's, it's, it's this uh, Caucasian girl who, who did the art, and she kind of made it sort of like, how do I explain it? Um, I would say that the way she depicted them was not necessarily flattering. Mm. And even the teachers were kind of like, you know, have you talked to the people in the community that you're like making art of? Like, have you talked to these people? She's kind of like, no, no, I had no interest in it. You know, and they, like, they, I think even another professor brought it up again, like, you know, how are you communicating with these people? And she's kind of like- You mean with these people with objects? With, with black people in the community she was in. Um, you know, so she was painting the people in this community, I see. but from a uh, almost anthropological kind of perspective, like, uh, you know, like National Geographic, like she was just exploring a different culture mm -hmm. without actually being invested in it, you know. So I, I think when, when, when I say black art, which I mean, I, I wouldn't even call it black art. What I do, I think is more specifically... Uh, Afrocentric and Afrofuturist, you know, and so the way I would describe Afrofuturist art to me is uh, art where it, it creates an idea and an image about what uh, what black people can be in the future or what Africans can be in the future and what uh, type of, of culture we could have, you know, and it, it's more about it investigating um, sort of like dreams and ideas of what it what it could be um, and how to get there and using technology specifically mm -hmm. I think most of my art is sort of centered around that so you know uh, I, I, I wouldn't say you know I think aesthetically you know art is very different in general you know there's there's always sort of a canon but then it's very wide-ranging so, you know, I don't think it's anything specific. I think more, uh, it's Afrocentric in its subject matter. And, uh, you know, just to specify, I think my subject matter is very specifically black women. Most anything. of your work is portraits, the portraits of people mm -hmm. with a very rich background, um, which is sometimes very hard for the artist to create background because you have to somehow this background you have to integrate with your object mm -hmm. to become your central object. What this background means to you in, um, in depicting of your subject for for some of it, I think the ones that, that you're talking about, the background is actually the whole story is about uh, or ideas about the fourth and fifth dimension, right? So it's sort of spiritual ideas, and the figure is obviously in the third dimension. You know, it's in front of you. And then what I'm trying to depict behind them is sort of an opening into the fourth and then directly behind that, the fifth. But um, obviously it's sort of, 
an abstract idea of things that none of us have ever seen or at least don't remember. And when I say perspective, I mean the human concept of perspective, of how you see the world specifically from where you're sitting. You know, and I think that most most groups, whatever you want to call them, demographics, you know, they they don't necessarily see everyone's perspective. And I think that uh, that's because they don't have to, you know. And I think specifically black women often do have to. You know, they have to understand everyone else before they can even understand themselves. And, you know, so I think, I think they deserve that representation. They deserve to be... Uh, made images of where, you know, it's a, it's a positive, uplifting image. So why do you, you said, um, you focus on African American women, why is that? Um, I think that, uh, at the end of the day, the way our society has been set up, um, I would say one of, if not the most, one of the most disenfranchised groups is specifically black women. And... Uh, I think, ironically, that actually, um, it both makes it harder for them, but also makes, makes them stronger people, you know, makes them more dedicated to certain things, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I just think, uh, they need representation, you know, and I think, really, at the end of the day, I mean, if I'm being honest about it, uh, I, I'm... I'm a propagandist, you know, that's what I'm doing with my art. I'm not just making pretty pictures, you know, I'm trying to make a statement about what I think the world should be or could be. And so I think that, you know, black women are not represented enough, or at least only recently has there been any kind of representation. Um, and so I, I think it's important to paint them, you know, to paint them in that kind of light, to paint them in in futuristic settings because there's so many sci-fi movies but how many of them star a black woman you know how many of them are about like a black woman accomplishing something you know as the main role as the main character you know I think uh, to me I think black women are the future and you know I say that in a sense once again because it it's about perspective you know and uh, you know I think that's perspective is really mostly what my, what my work is about you know, I think uh, uh, it's it's about how you see the world. And I remember I had a critique and I said something like that, like, oh, I think it's about, uh, my work is about perspective. And then she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, um, you know, two-point perspective. She's talking about, like, the drawing concept of perspective. Mm -hmm. And when I say perspective, I mean the human concept of perspective, of how you see the world specifically from where you're sitting. You know, and I think that most most groups, whatever you want to call them, demographics, you know, they they don't necessarily see everyone's perspective. And I think that uh, that's because they don't have to, you know. And I think specifically black women often do have to, you know. They have to understand everyone else before they can even understand themselves. And, you know, so I think, I think they deserve that representation. They deserve to be uh, made images of where you know, it's a, it's a positive, uplifting image. You can use images to have people think one thing or another, you know, so I think I really want to use my images to have people think a certain way.